Well, good morning, church. Welcome again as we gather around as a Chunga Uniting Church and family and friends. We are well aware that there are some of you who are listening from around the Adelaide Hills, around the state, and even further afield. Uh, so if you are listening and you're not a regular part of the Achunga congregation, drop us a line, let us know that you are uh, engaged with us this morning. We'd love to hear from you. Welcome to you, welcome to uh, those who are regulars in the church. Today we have some special guests to lead our worship uh, in just a moment. It's a real treat for you. Uh, so let's uh, share in some notices in the life of the church first. For those joining us here on Sunday mornings, we will be having a Zoom link up at 11am. If you've set up Zoom on your computer or device, you can join us by clicking on the link that will be provided in the chat section of the church online page or on the email this week. Thank you to those who have set up regular electronic giving for your weekly tithes and offerings. You can find our account details by clicking the giving button or on the giving section of the church website. If you have a specific prayer request, you can click in the prayer request button or email us. This will be passed into a group who pray for the weekly needs or to our prayer team. Not on our weekly email list? Email minister at achunga.ucasa.org.au and we'd love to keep you in the loop. Contact details are also on our website. Hi families. This week, we on our Sway page, we're coming up to the end of our four-week series on Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount series has some of Jesus' most memorable and challenging teachings. And throughout this series, we've looked at how Jesus has called his disciples to live differently. Alicia has done a great job with the memory verse and has sent in a video of herself uh, memorising Matthew 7, verse 24 to 25. And her um, video is up on our Sway page and we're going to watch it um, this morning as well. And um, so kids, if you're still memorising this verse, you can send it in this week. And for an extra challenge, you could also try to remember Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27, which is just a little bit longer if you've already memorised the previous verses. Um, and if you can send in a video, I'll make sure that you get a prize in the next activity pack. I hope you're all going well and I look forward to seeing you online um, either in the morning before church or um, hopefully you get to catch some of our videos on our Sway page. All right, bye for now. Therefore, everyone who hears this, these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat it against that house. Beca yet it didn't fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Matthew 7, 24 slash 25. Hello there again. It's birthday time and it's June, the beginning of the new financial year and all the rest of it. But there's some important people who have... Whoops, I'll blow the candle out in a minute. Some important people who have uh, got birthdays this month and we start off with Minion who has a special birthday. Minion, congratulations in achieving a, a wonderful uh, time in your life. It, life just begins, I can tell you that. And then we've got Aaron, Joy, Laurie, big big month in, the, in your family, Laurie. You've got Peter coming up later on in the month. John Ward, happy birthday to you, Wardy. You've got to be the oldest the oldest parishioner in the place. Good luck to you. Then we've got Kathy, Nathan, Lauren, Jan, Jenny, Sue, Rebecca, Oliver, Nikki, Peter. Peter, yeah, good day, Pete. Happy birthday in the new home, Pete. Jamie, and as I said earlier, Peter, again, Dylan, and. Dylan, is it? I'm told. Right. Hi, Dylan. 
And then uh, to round out the month, young Judy. Glad to wish you a happy birthday, Judy. So there you are. Now you can all eat your hearts out while I eat some chocolate cake. Cheerio. Thank you, Bob. I mentioned that we've got some special guest worship leaders today, so uh, we're going to hand over to them. Wren Collective are a group out of Ireland, and this morning they're going to be sharing us in four of their songs. Two of them that we're familiar with at Achunga, and two that will be new but you'll pick up very easily. Now you might want to clear your lounge room floor because there's a bit of joy in this, and you might want to even get up and dance as we worship our God this morning. Well, hello church. We count it a great privilege to be with you, to worship with you um, and your church. I'm just going to read from John chapter 4, um, 23. Jesus said, But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for their Father is seeking such people to worship him. You know, it came after just a moment when the Samaritan woman said, But don't you Jews say you're meant to worship in the temple? Jesus was saying, it doesn't matter where you worship from, it matters about the state of your heart. That's where worship comes from. That's what the Father's looking for. So today, whether you're in a living room, <laughs> whether you're outside, no matter where you are, we just love the fact that we can worship together. We don't need to be in a church building. We are the church. So let's just choose to worship God despite our circumstances. You know, Jesus didn't say to worship in feelings and circumstance but he said in spirit and in truth. So let's sing together. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you home. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to show In my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, in the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh, oh you are the peace in my troubled sea see his faithfulness my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness i will follow you oh my lighthouse my lighthouse i will trust the promise to show up.
God's building his kingdom. Even in this moment, this is a good one to pray for revival. So let's do it Irish style. Let's sing an Irish hymn together. Come say your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we may. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Cause we are your church and we need your power. All right, let's go. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger. our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captive hearts release the hurt the sick the poor at peace we lay down our lives for heaven's cause we are your church and we pray revive this earth
All right, folks. We're socially distant right now. So we can't do things uh, exactly the way that we would if we were there with you in person. That doesn't mean we're not gonna make a wee effort here to have a little bit of Irish shin diggery. That's a real word, look that up. Why don't you get your arm around whoever you've got near you right now, whoever your lockdown partners are. Why don't you just uh, get your arm around them, give them a wee snuggle, and uh, let's celebrate the kingdom of God together. We're still doing this thing, even in the middle of this weird moment. We're still building the kingdom of God. We believe he still has plans for us to prosper us, not to harm us. That's worth celebrating. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty head. Heal our streets and our land. Let's go. Steady your church. might have worked out by now we're big believers in joy we believe in the truth of scripture we believe that the joy of the lord is our strength let's lift up that truth over our circumstances right now let's sing it out come on though the tears may fall my song will rise my song will rise to you Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. Though the world is rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. We're singing for joy, come on. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I cannot see you with my eyes, let faith arise to you. Though I cannot feel your hand in mine, let faith arise to you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. We worship you, I you shine with glory, Lord of life, we alive with you. In your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I say it, I will praise you, Lord. Here we go. Then join you. sing it out. The joy of the Lord is my strength wherever you are. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let's choose joy. The joy of
Father, we're singing that in confidence, the kind of confidence that we have whenever we sing straight from your word, knowing that it never returns void, that there's always power in the words of scripture. We just recognize that this verse, the joy of the Lord is our strength, is so much more than self-help or anything like that. This isn't just a positive mindset, but this is supernatural power spoken in your word, anchored for all eternity. ourselves before him. everyone. And so as we come to our time of prayers for others, it's good to be still, isn't it? Because as we tune our hearts again to connect with our Father, with our Lord Jesus Christ, to invite the Holy Spirit to come to us, let's just remind ourselves of two of the beautiful truths that have been spoken to us in the Scriptures, living words. And so in the psalmist, God spoke to the one who wrote that beautiful poem, Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. And the writer to the book of Hebrews said it so beautifully. It's what we want to do this morning. I'm recording this on Wednesday, but together we're, we're one in spirit this Sunday morning. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's it, isn't it? That's what we're going to do this morning. And so I've been in touch with one or two who've brought some prayer requests for us to share together. And uh, we'll start with... Um, Prayer request from Jan, Jan Hennessy. Her daughter Angela, known and loved by many, has had shoulder, shoulder surgery and Jan asks we pray for her healing. It's part of some other complex joint pains and issues that Angela has. And so we'll hold her up to the Father, knowing that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Come to me, he says. And some came bringing their friends who needed healing. And so, Jan, we're standing with you this morning and holding your daughter Angela before the Father. Rosalie Lewis has asked that we uphold David and Emily. They're facing difficult times and God knows their needs. So we hold them too. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, would come, would bring them peace, healing at their points of need. Laurie Lynn, thank you, Laurie, for that beautiful rendition of Amazing Grace when we were celebrating Judy Cogan's life. On her heart this, this week is her, her mum, Joan, and Laurie is asking that we join her in beseeching our Heavenly Father for continued healing for her and for a fair and just resolution to her legal issues so that she can move on with her life. 
and uphold Joan this morning as well. And I asked Richard Williams, he reminded me and us to continue to pray for Brian and David Downing and John Pitchford, our dear brothers in Christ. We uphold them to the Father this morning. So let's just um, lift these, our friends, and part of our family, our local family here to the Father. Dear Lord Jesus, you healed all who were brought to you. And with those we've named before you this morning, we pause and remember some who are on our own hearts today but need a healing touch from Jesus. You are our master, our saviour, our healer. We thank you for all the wonderful healing you brought to those when you walked amongst us on earth, all who came to you. Lord Jesus, we speak healing over the lives of those who are in our hearts and minds and who we've named today. We know, Father, that when we call on you, you always do something. And so we thank you. Thank you for your hand upon these, our friends, our family. Amen. And the Felicity, Darren, Alicia and Caitlin, along with Joan, are asking that we continue to pray for those in Australia who are still in hospital with COVID-19, that we pray for our state, for the businesses in the sporting arena, hospitality, tourism, the churches, as they begin the recovery back to the new normal. Thanks to the Damons for those requests for prayer. We join with you in asking the Father that he continue to. We thank you, Father, for how far we've come. We know it's a long road, Lord, but we trust you. We trust you, Father, that you would lead us on this road to recovery. We trust you for your granting your wisdom, dis, uh, words of knowledge, discernment to our leaders, to all those on the front line still engaged in this battle for us. Thank you, Father. And our dear sister Joan Sexton has asked that through the experience of COVID-19, the Australian people will come to value more highly how precious are our family relationships and our caring for each other. And that this would lead to a breakthrough in the hearts of people to recognise and accept the love of Jesus that he offers them. And as she says, we certainly need the work of the Holy Spirit there. So let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Let's be still again just for a moment. Thank you, Father, for your glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, you're seated at the right hand of our Father, making intercession for us and for all those who we've prayed for already this morning in all those situations. And Father, we know of your great love for our world 
and we turn our hearts and thoughts now and our minds to the world today. Helen has asked that we pray for peace in our troubled world. And so I've got my candle here and it's just a symbol, but I'm lighting it, asking you, Father, that you would bring peace to our troubled world. Perhaps you have a candle that you could light and leave a light today to remind us all. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Bring peace to those places that are in conflict. For your name's sake. Amen. Richard reminded us that the um, situation in America, and so did the Damon family, is to pray for America, to pray for Donald Trump to pray for the family of George, George Floyd. I didn't know who he was, and so I, I Googled, it, Googled it and found that he was a Christian, that he'd gone to work in that place where he was murdered for, um, in Christ's name. He'd gone to do a discipleship, and he was a tall man, six foot six, and a gentle man, and who could go into a troubled area, and people who were troubled and violent, and come alongside them. He had a beautiful gift. And so we thank you, Father, for George Floyd. We ask that your Holy Spirit would comfort his family. And Father, the repercussions of his death are so huge. Bring peace to our troubled world, Lord. You know, um, Lynn Prescott put me on during COVID-19 to follow King and Country, that beautiful, uh, those brothers and their band. And they had a prayer for their, their um nation and some thoughts that I I think are just marvellous or just we can't go past them. They say as Australian Americans they can't fully understand perhaps when, when this life is confusing and there's such devastation we can find hope and guidance in looking to how Jesus lived with his incomparable compassion, empathy and teachings to love God with all our hearts, souls, minds and strength and to love our neighbours as ourselves. There's no greater love than the one who would lay down their life for a brother or sister and to weep over the loss of life. And so they ask, may we come together and love as we never have before. Love our neighbours, love our communities, love this country for us, Australia, for America, and live from a place of love in the land we love. Beautiful prayer. We thank them for it. And we do uphold Donald Trump with all the leaders of the world who have such great responsibilities for the governing of their nations and for the um, institution and the maintaining of justice for all. And so there we go. Have we covered everything? I think so. Why don't we just finish by joining together in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We ask today that you would forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless. Speaking Psalm 139, NIV version, if you'd like to follow in, this, in your own Bibles. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You know my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, Lord too lofty for me to attain. 
Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, and if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, the, night, the light will become night around me. But even the darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. You created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in a secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O Lord. How vast are the sum of them. Were I to count them, they'd outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you'd slay the wicked, O Lord, away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them, and I count them my enemies. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Well, what an encouraging passage. This would have to be one of my favourite psalms and one of my favourite passages of scripture. If you've never read Psalm 139 before, go back after this and read it. Soak it in verse by verse because it speaks volumes of who God is, but also who you are through him, his heart for you. It's a psalm, like many psalms, written by David, who grew up a shepherd boy and later, by God's appointment, became king. You'll know the story of David and Goliath. But throughout his life, David was a musician. He played the harp and he wrote these songs that are captured and left for us today. Worship songs, songs that are very honest. And this is just one of those beautiful psalms. It speaks of a few truths. So today, we sit back and just unpack those and are reminded of those afresh for us today. First of all, Psalm 139, from David's perspective, as he understood it, tells us that you and me, that we are known. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You are known. God is not distant. God is not somewhere far off, too worried about all the other problems in the world. He searched you and know me, you. He knows everything about you. Before a word's on your tongue, he knows it. God is, he knows you. You are known. What a beautiful truth. As the psalm goes on, we're reminded that we are, you are, not alone. David asks, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? It's a rhetorical question. Of course, nowhere. The heavens, the depths, the, the wings of the dawn, the far side of the sea. There is nowhere we can go and be alone, away from God. He is with us as we have experienced, as we have been sharing in our valleys and on our mountaintops. There is nowhere we can go from God's Spirit. He is with us. We can say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me. But God is even in the midst of that. So you are not only known, hear that, but you are not alone, whatever you find yourself in today. It's a beautiful truth. But those words also remind us that we can never escape from God. It's as if sometimes we approach life 
as if we're about to enter into the Big Brother house. And I know there's a new series about to start on TV. And if we, if we approach life as if we're about to enter the Big Brother house and to say, uh, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to keep some things hidden. There's some things I'm going to do and I'm going to say that I'm going to keep to myself. Well, of course, in the Big Brother house, there is nothing that you will say that won't be recorded by the many microphones and cameras that are everywhere. And we sometimes approach life with God like that, as if there are parts of our life that God won't see, that we might think or ponder on or even say in private, and somehow God will, will not know about it. But Psalm 139 reminds us that not only is God with us, walking with us, but he also sees those inmost parts of us. There is nothing that God cannot see. There's nowhere we can flee from him. So something worth keeping in mind as we go through day by day. The passage also reminds us, as David saw it, that you are a masterpiece. Body image has always been, in recent years, something that's on the topic of media, particularly for young people growing up and searching identity. Body image is a huge issue and we're fed different images in the media that cause us to compare ourselves. People are, are often seen and quoted and, and, and they'll say, I hate my body, I hate the way I look, by comparing it with others. But here we're reminded that if we do that, if we're critical of, of the body, our shape or our makeup, we're really being critical of the one who's behind it. Because here, as David understood it, here in Scripture, we are told that you were created by God, that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Of course, we need to look after our bodies. We need to keep fit and keep in shape and eat well. But the way you are made, the thing that we often look at and wish we didn't have, that was created by God. You're not an accident or mistake. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, it goes back right to your very beginning, not just at birth, but we're told here that God created our innermost being that you were knit together in your mother's womb. It's not that God sat back there with some knitting needles and a ball of yarn. He, you were pieced together. The, the, the message behind this is that you were constructed and designed exactly the way you were meant to be. You're a masterpiece. And God knew about you way from the beginning before your parents even saw you. He saw your unformed body. And not only is your masterpiece in the creation of your body, but the masterpiece is in, in your life and that the days were ordained for you. There are days in your life God has and does still have a plan for you. We live in a broken and fallen world. There are so many things we have to navigate. Sin enters our life if we let it. And sin in the lives of others causes uh, harm to come to us. But... God does have a plan. The days ordained for you were written in your book before one of them came to be. What a beautiful, encouraging promise. You're a masterpiece and God has a plan. What this passage is also really encouraging in though, did you notice right at the end that the tone changes? And after all these beautiful words that we love to memorize and soak in and write songs, suddenly there's a change of so tone in verse 19. If only God, you'd slay the wicked. This sense of, of, of real anger comes out of David's mouth. Now, if I was the, uh, one of the scribes years later who was writing this down and working out whether to include this in, in the hymn book, which is the book of Psalms, then I might have said, you know, maybe we can leave this part out. But instead, here in this God-breathed psalm, it's in Scripture, it's in 
the Bible for us today, we have this, this raw honesty from David. This section of the psalm, like other psalms and laments, that remind us that we are in good company. If you have ever had a moment, or if you're in one right now, where you have felt hatred or anger or bitterness or questions or wrestling, you're in good company. With many saints who've gone before you, with many others wrestling with those things today. David even says it here. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord? Jesus says not to do that, but here David is just being honest about the feelings welling up inside. He has a moment. He has a rant. He's honest. He feels these feelings against those who are wicked, those who misuse God's name. And it wells up within him and he cries out to God. And here it is for us to be reminded that we too, just as we feel these things, David was the same. He may have been king, we may look up to him, but we're in good company. But as many Psalms do, this one rounds off as David comes back to what matters. He's not afraid to be honest with God, but he comes back and he takes a breath. And he says, search me, O God, and know my heart. For David, he's taken a breath and realized that these feelings of hatred and anger, they, they really don't belong. He knows they're not the way that God wants for him. In his head, he knows he's fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows all of that good stuff about who he is in God, but he has these feelings of hatred and he knows they shouldn't be there. So he asks God to search him and know his heart. In this last week, it was this particular line, this part of the passage that, that struck me. That perhaps this is the prayer that each of us need to be praying and asking God now. Search me. Know my heart. Test me, Lord, and know my anxious thoughts. Lord, shine your light on my inside. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me instead to the way everlasting. It's kind of a dangerous prayer because it invites God to shine on those places we might have rather seen hidden. It invites him to take our brokenness and our, our, our muck, those anxious thoughts and that hatred and whatever we might have rather nobody sees and God shine his light on it so it can be dealt with. Those offensive ways. And as he shines on them, we have an opportunity to give them back over and be led to that way everlasting. Search my heart. It's a prayer that we should all be praying and, and praying to God regularly. That he would shine on us the things that we have kept hidden and would rather others don't see. Over the last week or so, the world has been in chaos, it would seem. Not because of the virus, but because of a response to racism in one part of the world. And one act by one officer. It has been all over our news. It's been consuming. And it seems like uh, for the moment there is no end to this. And it's very easy for us to hear, sit back and go, gee, I'm glad I'm not over there. Or how can they do that? As if to say that we are completely different and not like that here. But a, a question worth asking is, uh, if we were honest, if we were to ask God to search our hearts, would he find in us some of the things that we are seeing happen in the news in other places. Maybe not the severe actions, the rioting and the expression of it, but behind some of our hearts and our thoughts and our attitudes, are there the same kind of prejudices against others, be it those of another race or culture, 
or those who are just different from us that we don't understand? Do we find, if we're really honest, if we allow God to really search our heart, that within us are some of those same kind of things that, have, uh, that this is, has lit a match to over in the States right now? Certainly many commenters uh, have said, look, Australia, we can't really talk. We may express things a bit differently, but we too have these same prejudices when it comes to race. Search my heart, O oh God. It's a dangerous prayer, but if we're honest, if God was to shine his light on us, would we find some things there that we've been holding on to or that we picked up over the years that need to be washed clean? Lord, see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. It's a beautiful psalm, but it offers us some challenges as well as some encouragement. So I'm going to invite you to pray with me and to ask God to search our hearts. Because there are things within us, despite over and over again being reminded to repent or to throw things off, some of this stuff is embedded deeply. It may be inherited from our parents. It may be attitudes that we pick up from the media or our friendship circles. But if we're really open to God shining his light, we know it shouldn't be there. There is a better way. And the good news is that as we come to Jesus, we can offer that over and we can turn from that. And the blood of Jesus will wash over all our sin, our hatred, all of our things that we have been holding on to and wash us clean that as we receive the holy spirit as we shared last week we are a field and we keep in step and become more like jesus to bear fruit of love and joy and patience and peace and all of those things the promises are there the truth is there our part is to allow god to do that searching and then to respond as things are identified so will you pray with me? Will you open your hearts for God to search today and to bring about that change? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these incredible promises, for David's understanding that uh, that is truth, that these are your words to us through him. We thank you that we are known, that we're in good company, that you can handle our, uh, our words of honesty and that you will encourage that. We thank you that we are a masterpiece. So we pray this morning that you would search our hearts, show any offensive way in us, attitudes we've held, things that might not be triggered but are there. We confess them to you whether it's about our own bodies or our own lives or whether it's about others who we just don't understand. We, we bring those things to you. We confess them in a moment of silence. Jesus, we turn from these things and we hand them over to you. Take them. Wash over them with your blood. Remove them as far as the east is from the west. And fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. To allow us to be led into the way everlasting. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's a powerful prayer as we've prayed that prayer. We only need to be reminded if we keep slipping, if we keep questioning, by looking at the symbol of the cross. The cross shows us God's love for us. It reminds us of his incredible gift of grace. Because as God continues to shine on our hearts, we might find more offensive ways. We don't have to be eaten up by that. We only need to understand that we 
are forgiven, that grace is extended and that we can turn and get back up again. As we look to the cross, we see the extent of God's incredible love for you. So I invite you now to sit back, to sing and reflect and survey that wondrous cross. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for who we are and who you are. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you today. We give back to you our lives, our all, our everything. It demands it, the work that you've done. We pray today for the offering that's been given through this week to continue your work in this church and beyond. We pray you'd use it for your glory as we offer it to you. And we thank you that you go with us to continue that work ourselves. That you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are with us every step of the way as we go this week. Amen. Go in peace. God is with you.